we're going to have a look at creating library features we're going to start off with this assembly here uh, if we just zoom in onto the corner and explode the view people that have put flat pack furniture together before will be familiar with this um, if we just go ahead and collapse it you have a dowel rod that goes into a hole a retaining screw and then that's locked into position with the cam and then a cap sits on top if we take a look at the panel we have these two features here a borehole and a smaller hole here that we need uh, for for that retaining screw and the cam now normally that would have to be done as two separate features but this is the type of thing that is ideal for being created as a library feature so we'll just go ahead and look at how we can do that okay so I have a blank panel here which I'm going to put my library feature onto we'll just go ahead now and make the library feature okay so I start off with the standard part and I'm just going to create some geometry that is large enough to house my library features We'll then open up a sketch on the face and sketch the profile out that we're we're looking for. So first off, it's the borehole. So just some dimensions there to fully define that. We'll then spin that round and on this face open up a sketch and at this stage I want to see the hidden detail and we'll also turn on temporary axes. I'm going to sketch a circle and lock it to the axis of the hole and position it from the base of the hole at six millimeters. OK, I'll extrude cut that sketch. I want it to terminate inside the bore, so we'll just set the end condition to up to next there. OK, now we've got our features that we need for our library feature. Um, so what we do is we select the features we want to add to the library, i.e. the two holes that we just cut out. And then in the design library here, you just pick a location where you want to save those two and then select add to library it will highlight in the property manager the features that you're bringing through you just have to give the file a name so so there it is in my library and we'll just go ahead and we'll open it in its own window now if we just examine the tree here you'll notice that the uh, part symbol has been replaced with this library symbol here and the features that have been added to the library have an L symbol on top of them in the tree. We have a references and dimensions folder here. The references folder consists of all the edges and faces we need to position these um, features in place. And then we have the dimensions folder, which consists of all the dimensions in the sketch. Now it's a good idea to rename these dimensions. Okay, now we've done that, we'll just save that away. Close it down, and then we'll drag it from the library onto our part. So when we drop it, it knows the first reference, which is the face we drop it onto. We just then have to select the other references with the aid of this little fly out here to position the library feature. 
Okay, so there it is. Within the property manager of the library feature, um, if we drill down into the size dimensions here, you can see all of those dimensions that we've renamed appear here. And if we want to override any values within here, we can do. Okay, we'll just undo that and reopen the library feature. Okay, within dimensions, you have this locating dimensions folder here, and we'll just drag in a couple of dimensions into that. Save that. And now drag and drop that feature onto our part. Again, we have to add the references. Now, what you'll find this time is the locating dimensions area here has been populated with some values. That's the two dimensions that I dragged into the folder. And it will allow you to place the feature wherever you release it on the, uh, on the face. It will also give you the, the value of those dimensions based on where you've dropped it. Now, that's quite nice because you can just drop it roughly in the right place and then round it up. Like so. Okay, we've just undone that again and we'll reopen that library feature. Also in this dimensions list here we have internal dimensions that will just allow you to drag some dimensions into that folder and those dimensions will not be accessible as and when you drop that feature down. So let's just save that away. Drag and drop that cutout on again. Again, define the references like so. And you'll notice now that within the size dimension, those cam bore dimensions aren't available. We'll just undo that. And the last thing we'll look at is configurations. So we'll reopen that library feature. And we'll go to our configuration manager here. I'll take the default configuration and just rename it to something descriptive. So I've called that 16 millimeter diameter. We'll take the bore dimension here and then select configure dimension and we'll also add the counterboard depth dimension at this stage. We'll add a new configuration this time we'll call it 12 millimeter diameter and we'll just change these values to, to suit. Okay so we now have two configurations 12 mil and 16 mil diameter. We'll save the library feature away and now drag and drop it onto our part. So what you'll notice this time is as we drag and drop it on, we're given a choice of configurations. Let's just do the 12 mil diameter one first. Again, pick your references. and that just comes in like so. We'll do a 16 mil diameter one now. And perhaps we'll spin this one round. Like so. That brings us to the end of the demo. Hopefully you can see the benefits in using library features.